everyone. My name is Daniel. I'm just a casual sim racer, and this is the first of what is going to be a monthly ongoing series of reviewing the latest Ren Sport, you know, state of the game every month. And this is the June 2023 Ren Sport beta review. So I'm going to be diving in, covering a lot of the details, giving my best perspective. I'm involved with modding for the game and giving feedback to the Rensport creators, and I went over there to Germany to meet with them. However, that doesn't mean I bought or uh, bought and paid for, I guess. Um, in fact, actually, we went over there, and I don't know if they, maybe they did, maybe they didn't, but we were had some critiques for sure, not just on the game, but also on just kind of the event itself and how they utilized us going over there. I mean, they flew us all the way out there, spent tens of thousands of dollars getting us across. I mean, for me, for example... I had flown out from California. That's not a cheap plane ticket. And so it was one of those things where discussing it was like, how are they best going to use it? Because the way I view us is our role is being that voice in their ear to make sure they don't screw up modding or make some weird decision. But it's more than that. I view this as I have a duty to the community, you guys, to be a voice in their ear. And not just for modding, but for the entire game. But of course, modding is a huge part of that. Um, and this is just one way to keep you guys in touch all right, so let's jump into the main menu here. This is going to be kind of, I'm going to be reviewing the UI, giving you a quick update here. Right now we have no AI. We have, these are the allowed cars. There's four options, all GT3 cars, I think, unfortunately for some people. But I understand the decision to go with GT3 off the bat. It's due to the fact that it's just the most popular, you know, car class right now. So you can choose from these. This is what technically is in my garage right here, but it is the same thing. It's just this Mercedes 2020 GT3 car with the Audi, the BMW, and the Porsche. If we go into race settings, there's a bunch of settings. You can do, you, I guess in the future, we'll be able to do stages, things like that. Change it from just practice. You know, grid start, pit lane start. <laughs> it's interesting, you know, when you're out here, you can see like the race settings here, but you can't actually change those yet. So just tire wear, fuel usage, damage. Right now it's on zero, but you know how good's the damage gonna be? We don't know yet, but um, it's exciting to kind of see this. I guess options available here it looks like it's gonna be kind of the typical stuff. Um, it'd be cool depending on how much you can fine tune this stuff. I don't know how. You know, I know a lot of games that tops out around five, six times tire wear, five, six times fuel usage. For me, I like to run shorter races, but I still like to simulate a lot of time. So, you know, if they could get a 20 times tire wear or a 30 times tire wear, that'd be really awesome for fuel usage and tire wear to be able to sit there and simulate, you know, in an hour, for example, if you have 24 times tire wear and, and time, you can actually simulate a 24 hour race in an hour, which for me is about the longest that I can find time on a regular basis to sit down and do an endurance race. So that 24 times is important um, for me in terms of tire wear, fuel usage and time progression. Alrighty, so right now let's look at the tracks here real quick. We got Monza, Spa, Frankerchamps, Hockenheim Ring, and the Nurburgring Grand Prix layout. All pretty solid tracks in a lot of games. I mean, the Hockenheim Ring might not be in every game, but it's in a lot. And then, of course, Spa, Monza, and the Nurburgring Grand Prix layout are in practically every single racing game out there. I mean, the only one that they're not missing is they just got to get Imola. <laughs> and then they'll have the, the real uh, ones that are in every game. So, anyways... uh. And, and I'm not a huge fan. I, they don't need to go get Emma. I'll be honest. They probably will. But to be honest, there's a lot of tracks that I think would be better suited for them to look at. And I think the modding scene is going to do a good job with that. I mean, one thing we did see at the event, we were able to drive and experience two different mod tracks, one of which was created within Unreal Engine 5, one of which was created within a set of Corsa and then brought over into Ren Sport through the Unreal Engine 5 level editor. And so that's what you're looking at right here. You're going to see some of the tracks, some of the pictures and images of those tracks. And they're quite well done. And I think there's a lot of potential from what we've seen. Like I said, we haven't really done a lot diving into the tools. That's one of the criticisms I had for Rensport when we were over there. It was like, you fly us out here, you spend a couple hours talking to us, and nothing's too substantial. So that's something that this week's going to change. And so I'm looking forward to that, diving more into the tools, things like that. Hopefully there's a lot there. Um, and anyway, so we're looking forward to that. Um, right now, you know, that you can see the modding, you, there's a lot of potential here, of course, you know, changing the trees, upgrading to, you know, the unreal engine level shaders, 
you know, also just the ability to have huge poly count 3D models in the game, you know, 600K, you know, potentially if you use Nanite technology built into Unreal Engine 5 correctly, you can have, you know, a million perhaps poly count plus, you know, so Gran Turismo 7 levels of detail. I will say this, the driving experience is um, different on my own rig than what I experienced at the Ren Sport event. Biggest difference is the braking. Now I could tell when I was driving it, thankfully, that I was not a huge fan of the VRS pedals that they were using, either the, just the setup of the pedals. I mean, also it hurt that the, like, the force feedback was really turned down because, of course, there's a lot of people at this public event, they don't want it cranked up to, you know, 10, 15, you know, Newton meters of force that could potentially hurt someone. But so anyways, when I get into the simulator here at home, I got access to the beta. I do have to say that I had a much better experience since I've had it at home. Driving experience, I can say, is probably more forgiving than a set of Corsa. And the main means in what I mean by that is it's sliding. So there's the edge is more forgiving. Um, I've heard people compare it a little bit like maybe race room. And yeah, I think it's a little bit that direction. I think kind of take a set of Corsa, perhaps competizione, set of Corsa competizione and push it a little bit into the R factor two direction in terms of the slidiness and limit behavior, which I know for some people that might sound like a dream come true. I don't know if that's necessarily like I'm not a huge R Factor 2 guy. I find it to be kind of silly at times if you're really trying to push and especially depending on the car. But um, I don't think it's quite, at least for me, this feels enough like a set of course of Competizione, I think. And of course, we're driving GT3 cars. So there should be some, I guess similarities there if you're getting you know data from the manufacturers things like that things should drive similarly i would say the force feedback is crap i mean it's terrible in my opinion compared to a set of course of competition i love a set of course competition force feedback but you know not everyone does i do think set of course competition force feedback has only gotten even more incredible in recently and probably the best out there um right up there with r factor 2 in my opinion Although maybe you can't feel the tires quite as well, but I just think overall. With Ren Sport, it's the one area that I feel like is its weakest point. It's the force feedback. The driving experience, like I mentioned, is somewhat... I mean, you can just... I'm going to lose it here, but I'm trying to over-exaggerate it there for you for a second. But you can really enter into some slides. Like, I think some drifting mods or the drifting community gets in here. I mean, obviously, the physics are going to be tweaked and things like that, but I think there's some real potential for some drift physics to really be unleashed in this game. But what I was getting at, generally, the biggest downside, if we look at the force feedback, is, like, look at the look on the right. You'll see the clipping bar in the bottom right. I have this at 50%, which is lower than I normally have it for most games with my CSL DD 5 Newton meters. Um, and it just still is always clipping. And to be honest, when it's up near that clipping, it doesn't really feel that much stronger. And I think what happens is when it clips, it almost cuts all the force feedback completely off. It's hard to tell. Either way, the forces don't seem the strength are not clearly definable that well, at least on my CSL DD. I've messed around with the settings. Um, there's a setting that feels a little bit like it was damping. I turned that from two down to zero. Actually, let me show you in the settings right now. So I'll show you my force feedback settings right here. I'm not just speaking out of my memory all right so we got 50 for forces strengths um i can lower this i've upped it i'm upping just results in lots of clipping that's worse if i do too low too much lower i stop to feel i stop feeling some of the details that i need to feel when i'm driving this is about where i've found is good 
Uh, the filter, this was on like a two. This I put down to zero and this really brought, compared, especially compared to the experience I had in Germany, in Munich, really much better when I turned this to zero. Like so much better. So um, that's good. Sensitivity, obviously 100 minimum force can be zero on a direct drive wheel. So generally, those settings feel okay. They don't feel great is maybe a good way to put it. And they definitely don't feel anywhere good as a set of course competition or R factor two in the force feedback department. So I don't want you to get confused and think, oh, he's giving a great review of the physics. No, I think the physics are in a solid place. I think the force feedback, force feedback stinks, to be frank. Um, and maybe there's a settings that I'm just not seeing because maybe it's a little different or something, but and maybe other wheels are having more success, but I'll be honest, that's where the weakness is. And I think sometimes people get confused with force feedback versus physics, and they're two different things. But force feedback is how you feel a lot of the physics. So it is very important, and it's directly connected to the physics. And also physics can have an influence on how the force feedback feels too. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that develops. And it's something that I think can develop rather quickly, um, at least I'd hope so. Um, I mean, the set of course, the competition has great force feedback now, and it's on Unreal Engine 5. So to me, there's no limit on what they can, or Unreal Engine 4, excuse me, but there's no limit what they can do in Unreal Engine in terms of the force feedback and making it feel great. So no real worries there. It's just when and how quickly. And of course, I'll keep you updated on that. Um, so now let's, I guess, jump into kind of one of the last things. And that's one of the, I guess, multiplayer... Um, so they have added multiplayer. Now, of course, we're in a closed beta. So there's only 40, 50, 60,000 people, I think, have access. Maybe less. I'm not sure. But there's only a certain amount of people have access. But as you can see, the servers are pretty much dead. And unless you can gather some people to join up, there's no um, racing. And that's unfortunate. Maybe it's because I'm in the United States on the West Coast. But I have been unable to join a race. I've tried to get some people together. Unfortunately, they weren't able to get together for this video. But... Um, yeah, I'd love to jump in a race. From what I've seen other YouTubers, it's pretty solid. I mean, like I mentioned, this UI interface, I see nothing wrong with it. It's kind of simple, but it is kind of unique. And I actually think if this is the UI the game launches with, I have no issue with it. Like, none. Um, I think the UI is just fine. It works well with a mouse. It's relatively easy to navigate. You know, it's not really flashy, but I think that's okay. Reminds me a little bit of kind of what it... I don't even know if I want to go there, but maybe a little bit with R-Factor 2 kind of used to look like, but it's easier to use and, you know, frankly, way better than what that was. Um, I guess the last thing I want to do is maybe talk about some of the cars. So I was driving the BMW M4 GT3 car, which is my personal favorite car um, in the game. Now I'm going to jump into the Porsche. And all the cars drive differently, which is fantastic. You can feel the differences, things like that. But um, I love Mercedes GT3 cars, typically. That's my go-to in most games. Unfortunately, in the... Um, unfortunately, in Rensport, I am not a huge fan of how the Mercedes GT3 car drives. To me, I think it has the worst... I just blasted that wall. But to me, I think the GT3 Mercedes has the worst braking feel. I feel really disconnected in that car, whereas with the BMW, it feels great. I have a hunch because it says 2020. I Totally nothing else that I know about it other than just a hunch in that the GT3 Mercedes was one of the first cars they did. It says 2020. So I... Possibly that's one of the older cars in the game, and it just needs to be updated a bit to make the braking feel better. You know, and just the driving experience seem a little more alive, because right now it seems kind of stale. Um, when I drive the BMW, that's my favorite. I love the way it feels under braking. I love the way it attacks the corners. You can spin it if you're way too aggressive on the throttle. Um, it's really good. Porsche is somewhere in the middle, and that's kind of where I wanted to drive this right now. Um, braking feels good don't necessarily love and right now feels great on the curbs which honestly all the cars feel pretty good on the curbs maybe the Mercedes is the least 
And I just kind of don't generally get along well with that card, which is fine. Every game has their own interpretations. Perhaps I'll find a different card to love in this game. That's okay. Yeah, the arrow load feels a little... We should be more, but that's probably a force feedback claim more than the, the other. I think this game looks really nice, generally. Um, the trees look good. I've noticed some things, you know, off track. Some of the assets look a little off in terms of sizes. Um, I was looking in the pits, some of the pit boxes compared to some of the cars and buildings. I don't know. It was a little bit weird. Um, that's something that can be fixed. Just take going to 3D modeling and perhaps doing some track work, but it's a little interesting that got by the quality insurance team, but. Generally, when you're out on the racetrack, it's quite good. I don't know if they're laser scanning anything. I haven't heard one way or the other yet, and also I just haven't. I mean, you know, I'm busy with so much with Historic Sim Studios, my sim vendor, and everything else I'm involved with on the day to day. So, all right. Kind of the last thing. This is the last thing I want to talk about. Um, well, actually, I'll wait to show you. And the Spa Frankerchamps track is actually, if you look up on the left, it has the new stands that are put up. You can see the track where it's been resurfaced. That's great. So the tracks, of course, can be updated. They're going to be the latest versions. I mean, I think that's kind of to be expected, but it's still nice to see, you know. And it just confirms, you know, they're not trying to... This isn't a game that's trying to phone it in or something like that. No, this is a very serious sim racing development team, and it's a serious sim racing game. Alrighty, so now let's talk about sounds on these cars. I would say the sounds on all the cars are not spectacular. I mean, race room is the standard for that. I think the sounds are fine. I don't think they're terrible by any means. Um, the Porsche can ca sound kind of whiny. I think a little more whiny than in real life. Never driven in a Porsche, but to be frank, it can get kind of annoying. And that's one reason why I wanted to drive this car for the, you know, just to show you guys. I don't hear, like, the shifting. There's not a lot of... You know, it's pretty simple shift sounds, in my opinion. You know, just the sounds, they sound nice. There's nothing revolutionary about them. And I would say, overall, it's one of those things that I hope they can improve. I think a set of course, a Competizione sounds nicer, too. And I think, obviously, they should be able to get up to that level of sound. So just at this current point, area I think they should look into and try to improve. But is it terrible? No, not terrible. And like with the BMW, quite like the sounds of that car I actually quite like the sounds of the Mercedes they're just not race room standards and of course it's one of those things where if you're allowing modders to come in you know the modding of sounds for cars could be something that's you know available not maybe even for the base content if someone has access to the car or something now you would hope with Ren Sports resources they'll have access to the cars be able to get some really high quality recordings and that won't be necessary but it'll also be interesting to see what type of sound tools are going to be available for mod studios like Story Sim Studios, for example, and working on some classic and vintage cars. So something I'm looking forward to, and hopefully there can be some really cool things there for sound development and stuff like that. So this is generally just kind of as a quick overview. I think Ren Sport in this early beta stage is heading to a good direction. We haven't talked about AI because there isn't AI in the game. I haven't talked about modding a ton yet because I want to talk about in its own dedicated kind of video and some of the plans that perhaps, you know, I'm going to have with the Story Sim Studios. We'll see how much I get into that. I also have a interview coming out to this week. I know I said that last week, but it's getting edited right now. We're actually just deciding what to cut out and how to make it sound good, balancing the sound because we are kind of doing makeshift on the audio recording at the event. But I have interviews with other modders that were there, and that's going to also dive deeply into that. So generally, though, if we're just looking at the early access beta version of Rensport, 
I would say the driving experience and the physics are quite good. Force feedback is pretty terrible. The sounds are average and the tracks and the visuals are very good to excellent with the exception of certain track assets I think need to be resized and just verified by the quality control quality assurance team at Rensport to make sure some of those assets are correct um, and comparing them to the laser scanning or LIDAR data that they have or that they should get um, um, because if they aren't using LIDAR data of some kind, I think they're uh, they're really putting themselves a little bit of a disadvantage. So anyway, so that's my quick summary. I look forward to doing this again next month, and I hope there'll be a lot of progress, and I also hope that I'll be able to post at least one multiplayer race that I'll be able to jump in and just put that up as kind of a standalone race on the channel and see what you guys think, and perhaps we can set something up. So if you're interested, comment down below if you're in the Rensport beta and you're interested in featuring in an online event, um, I can invite you on Discord, and we can try to set something up cool. Um, if you're not in the Rensport beta, you can always apply. It's closed. I know they're going to open it up at some point. And of course, feel free to follow along. I know we don't have time for everything, and there's a lot of awesome sim racing games out there. And so I'll let you know if Rensport turns into the next great one. So thanks for stopping by, but most of all, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your week.